Dumbest criticism that I often hear about internet video makers. These are not in order of how much they piss me off. Number one, they swear too much. I'm sure this isn't exactly going to be a mind-blowing statement unless you're one of the peons who try and argue the previously stated point, but no. Swearing often does not make you stupid, nor does it cheapen whatever is going on. To quote Stephen Fry, the sort of twee person who thinks swearing is in any way a sign of a lack of education or of a lack of verbal interest is just fucking lunatic. There are simply people who swear a lot in some settings, with one of those settings being in their videos. Yes, there are people who play up swearing in uncreative ways simply to garner attention, but I'd have the exact same issue if they played up any other words uncreatively just to garner attention. These cusses just happen to make the children they aim their content at giggle. If you talk to me in a social setting, you'll know that I myself, like many people who grew up in Southern Ontario, swear like a fucking pirate. I use the word fuck or fucking to punctuate most statements, as well as including things like asshat, fucking prick, shithead, or cunt in most personal insults that I throw. However, again, like many who grew up in Southern Ontario, I have very good control over it and can easily not swear if in a setting where I should not swear or don't want to swear. Hence why you can watch entire Let's Plays of mine in games where I'm being less jokey and I'll swear little if at all instead of almost every sentence. Case in point, whether or not you swear in a video doesn't make it any better or worse itself, it's how you use it if you choose to use it. Number two, this video is too long. I'm more so directing this at people who watch Let's Plays or playthroughs than any other kind of video. Let me talk directly to the people who complain about a video being too long for a moment. You're using Google Chrome, right? Well, if you aren't, then fix it, because it's by far the best damn browser out there right now. Using it now? Good. Click the three horizontal lines in the top right corner, just below the close button. Click on settings. Near the top you'll see the on startup section. Tick off, continue where I left off. From now on, every time you open Google Chrome, it will automatically open all the tabs you had when you closed it. Now let's say you're 20 minutes into a 40 minute video, and you're going to go do something else for a while and you want to close your browser. Right click on the video and copy the URL at that time code. Paste it, go to it, now close your browser. When you open your browser again, it will skip right to where you left off. Problem solved. Be happy that it's not one of those self-centered fuckbags who upload all of their videos in 11 minute chunks, because that's the shortest you can make them while still being able to put the max number of advertisements on them. 30 seconds pre-roll for 20 minute video is perfectly fine. 30 seconds pre-roll and 30 second mid-roll with a banner ad during and post-roll ad during an 11 minute video is in-fucking excusable. Number 3. If you don't like it, why don't you make something better? I get a lot of this on my creepypasta readings telling me that I have to write a better story rather than dare bring up legitimate problems with their favorite ones. But I see this all the time when someone simply brings up a problem in a YouTube video. This is one of the dumbest arguments I've heard that is common on YouTube, as if you put more than two seconds into thinking about it, it completely falls apart. Look at any professional critic of anything. Movies, food, music, anything. The mass majority of them aren't filmmakers, chefs, or musicians. They specialize in analyzing and critiquing, not in making themselves. Roger Ebert, the world's most respected and valued movie critic, was not a filmmaker. If you are just mad that someone is pointing out the legitimate flaws in your favorite thing, come up with a real argument or grow up. If you are so stupid and emotional as to use this weak-ass argument, then you are too stupid and emotional to see the flaws in it in the first place. Number 4. They're just doing this for the money. Okay, anyone who is actually just doing this for the money is a complete idiot who spent no time at all looking into what you get paid for this. 
Not only do you get paid far less than one penny per view, but the view isn't even worth anything if either they have ad block on or if they just skip the ad right away. On top of this, getting internet famous is both an insane amount of hard work and requires a hell of a lot of luck. If you're looking at all of the views I get and thinking, man, he must be living comfortably, think again. At the time of writing this, I work roughly 30 to 40 hours a week on this show, yet only get paid about as much as 10 hours of work minimum wage. A month. Keep in mind also that my job requires a hell of a lot more skill and dedication than your average minimum wage job. This isn't because any company is screwing me out of money, it's because you aren't going to be making any kind of serious money off advertisements on YouTube videos unless you bring in tons of views every day. Number 5. I don't like this person because they asked me not to use adblock when watching their videos. This ties into what I said before. If you had adblock turned on when you watch a YouTube video, the user who uploaded the video does not get paid. They also don't get paid if you skip the advertisement after only 5 seconds have passed. You know those advertisements you can skip after 5 seconds? You actually have to watch 30 seconds for that video maker to get paid. Yeah, I know, blows your mind too? YouTube doesn't fucking tell you. YouTube doesn't even tell us, the content creators. We had to figure it out on our own. It's not even like adblock is just this tiny little thing that only takes away 5% of the money you would make or anything. Recent statistics on my videos alone tell me that I don't get paid for roughly 35% of my views. That means that I'm getting paid just over half of what I should be getting paid. Don't get me wrong, I understand why people love adblock, but could you at least tell adblock to pause when you're on YouTube? People are trying to make a legitimate living here as online directors giving free entertainment. We need to fucking eat. I use adblock too, everyone uses adblock, but it's to block the kind of stuff like when you go on those download websites to get something and it's covered in fucking annoying banner ads everywhere. Really the biggest problem with adblock is that people aren't educated on adblock. The common person has never been taught that if they don't see the advertisement, the person doesn't get paid and thus they might not even be aware that when they watch the people that they love and that they want to support for free, because they might not have money that they want to donate to the person or can donate to the person, they might not even know that by having adblock turned on, they are taking money almost out of the pocket of that person and the money goes nowhere. I blame YouTube for this one honestly because they're aware that this is not common knowledge. The average person does not know every little detail about how advertising payments work, but YouTube does nothing to fucking educate the masses, and this is how YouTube makes its money, not just the, the video makers. So it's insane, both on themselves being the greedy bastards that they are not teaching people, and it also hurts us, the content creators who are trying to make a living here. Don't get me wrong, I would do these videos even if I didn't get paid. I love doing these videos, but you'd see a hell of a lot less of them, because time is money, and at a certain point you have to say, I've got to dedicate less time into this thing because it's making me no money, and I need to eat. The microphone I have isn't free. The microphone I have was $300 after shipping and taxes and it just being an expensive microphone. The pop filter I got was another $15. My keyboard was almost $200 because I needed a nice professional keyboard. I'm gonna need to get a new mouse soon, that'll be a good 50. My computer, I built it years ago and with all the part replacements I've done since then and all the ones I need to do now. As it is, this computer has cost me a total of 2,500-ish dollars, and believe me, right now I'm saving up for a new graphics card because I'm telling you, mine is end of life. So remember, when a YouTube video creator just politely asks, hey, just consider turning off your ad block on YouTube, really do consider it. They're not being greedy bastards, they're being reasonable. Number six, get a real job. This is a real job, we're freelance online directors. Just like television, we make video audio content that is mostly funded by advertisements so that it doesn't cost the viewer to watch. 
The only difference is that we are in new media. We don't have high budgets and companies of hundreds of people, it's often just one person doing all of the recording, editing, and uploading. My channel is a one-man job either than when I do videos with friends. Every single video I put up on my channel is 100% edited and recorded by myself. The kind of assholes who say it's not a real job are usually high school students working at the local fast food place washing dishes who think that anything that doesn't require a resume isn't a job. I work harder than them, for longer than them, and my job requires far more skill than theirs, and yet if they're getting minimum wage, they're getting paid more than I am. Everyone knows how to wash dishes. Editing a video and recording things to edit in the quality that I do requires you actually study what you're doing. Seeing as I'm actually contracted by a corporation in full screen, yes, what I do is a real job. Number 7. You don't own the rights to the video games you upload, so it's fine that you get content ID claims. This comment always comes by people who are 100% uneducated on the problem and have done absolutely zero research on the subject. Video games are transformative art. Without the player involved, the game just fucking loops the title screen. A company can own all kinds of things in a video game like the art assets and music, however no one owns the gameplay. Some people like to say that video games are an illegal gray area, but they only say that to try and sound smart. It's extremely black and white how it's written down in the United States insanely primitive and out of date laws on DMCA. It is fair use for us to upload these videos for the purpose of parody or review. Let's Plays are classified as review and are owned by whoever makes the video itself. Hell, even uncommentated walkthroughs are covered by fair use. You'll see ID claims all the time on Let's Plays, but do you know what happens when you dispute them and write in your disputing message the legal information that proves you know what you're talking about? Nine times out of ten, they back down and get rid of the claim because they were just banking on you not knowing what you're talking about. You know what happened to me two days ago at the time of writing this? THQ ID claimed two of my videos. Not only was it completely within my rights for me to make those videos and they were false claims, but THQ declared Class 1 bankruptcy more than half a year ago. They do not exist anymore. When I disputed the claims, it only took one day for the claims to be removed and my videos were monetized by myself again. How the fuck a company that does not exist anymore could both claim something and remove a claim, I have no idea. It just shows you that yes, we own this content, and yes, YouTube's ID claiming system is completely, 100% broken. Lastly, number 8, you'll never go anywhere on YouTube. I was told this from the very start, that I'll never go anywhere, that everything I make sucks, that they could get so much more popular than me in a week, that they'll always be bigger than I am. I've surpassed many of them, but I still have so many more of them to prove wrong. I think all I need to do is go back to my roots and quote someone very inspirational to me and Michael Manna. I'll show you. You'll see.